Hey guys, Jeff Bangeter here again, Bangeter Financial Services, talking about 1031 exchange to a DST. I think one of the things that a lot of people are um, kind of concerned about these days is whether or not the government is going to continue to allow uh, the 1031. And you know, this has been in our tax law since 1921, so it's been around a long time. And in uh, 2017, in the new tax law that was passed, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, you know, there was a lot of concern that it was going to be taken away, and it certainly was on the chopping block. And there were a lot of, uh, you know, ind industry professionals or, or groups that were going out and talking to Congress and really helping them understand the impact that it would have if they got rid of 1031 exchange for real estate. Now, they did actually eliminate 1031 exchange on assets other than real estate. Um, prior to the 2017 tax change, you could do a 1031 exchange on like your farm equipment or on a uh, you know collectible car or paintings or whatever and so those things were eliminated in the 2017 tax change so we think it's important that you understand that um, i think congress and our current administration really understand real estate well enough to know that this is an important um, element of our tax law. It's been there again since 1921. I don't think it's going to change. You never know. They certainly could change it, but typically they don't make any uh, ex post facto laws. In fact, our Constitution says they can't do that. Um, never a guarantee, right, with our, uh, with our Congress and Senate out these days. So anyway, um, it did change the uh, the tax rate that we pay, and it uh, it didn't get rid of. You know, we pay that 3.8 percent. Uh, um, we call it the Obamacare tax. Uh, it's there to again pay an additional tax if you earn enough. So all those things are still there. So when you think about the tax that you will pay if you don't do this, right? So uh, here in California, where I'm at, our minimum tax is 9.3. It goes up to 13.3, depending on uh, your income. And uh, they consider the capital gain the same as income. So it just falls right in there, drives you up into the maximum tax bracket pretty fast. And then uh, the federal tax bracket, uh, currently it's either 0, 15%, or 20%. And again, you can get to the 20% pretty quickly. Uh, one of the other things I always like to make sure people remember is that the depreciation recapture is 25%. So if you've been depreciating property for the last 20 or 30 years, then you're going to pay back 25% of all of that depreciation uh, first, and then the capital gains tax, it gets really expensive really fast. So I think you need to really take a look at this and say, all right, how much money am I saving by doing a 1031 exchange versus, um, I will tell you, I've seen stockbrokers recommend to their clients, just sell it, pay the tax, and then we'll reinvest and we'll do well enough that you'll earn all the money back. I think that's not really being genuine. Uh, it's going to take you a lot. I mean, you're going to pay 30 or 40 percent tax. You're going to have to earn a lot of money over a short period of time to get even. And, and it just doesn't make any sense. Plus, do you really want to enrich the government that much? I don't know about you, but I'm not too excited about anything they're doing with my money. So I prefer to not give it to them if possible. So um, anyway, the taxing uh, conversation is important. That's really the main reason to do this. If there wasn't the tax hit, then you could just sell and do whatever you want with the money. But I think it's important that you realize uh, with all the tax changes, it's still very, uh, this is a very viable strategy doing the 1031. And we think that it is something that you should consider. Um, we would like to talk to your accountant, your CPA or enrolled agent, whoever's doing your taxes. We want to make sure that they understand the benefit of this. And I will tell you, many of them have never even heard of a Delaware statutory trust. So we want to make sure that they know what's going on. Uh, we had a recent situation where one of my clients called me and they said that they had to, they did the 1031 exchange with us and their CPA did not understand what was going on, told them they owed $70,000 because they didn't replace the debt. They took out a bank loan to pay the $70,000 and then called us. It's like, call me first, right? So I had to call and talk to their CPA and help them understand we, they didn't have to go get a loan, but we replaced the debt. They were assigned a portion of debt, which is how this works, which covered their debt, and they didn't owe any tax. 
And in fact, they had to then refile to get the $70,000 back. It would have just been so much simpler if the uh, tax professional took the time to get educated about how these programs work. We offer education to tax and uh, uh, legal professionals all the time, real estate professionals. We want them to know. So if you're considering doing a 1031, have your professionals reach out to us. Let us make sure they know exactly how this program works so you don't get caught in a similar situation where you have your tax person um, filing your tax return and saying you owe some ridiculous amount of money that you don't owe. And then, you know, having to go and try to get it back. We just think that that was crazy. So um, anyway, I think that's good for now. Uh, again, watch for some of our future uh, videos so you can understand how this program works. So thanks for watching. Uh, again, uh, Jeff Bangeter at Bangeter Financial Services. You can get us online at bangeterfinancial.com or give us a call at 800-451-2351 or 916-965-1879. Thanks for watching.